Hello and welcome to the Work, Wealth, and Travel podcast. I'm your host, Nicole, aka Nomad Neeks, and this podcast is the place to be if you are looking to start creating a lifestyle that you love. From business, entrepreneurship, travel, starting and sustaining a digital nomad lifestyle, and of course, making money online and investing, we talk about all of it here. So let's dive into it. Welcome back to the Work, Wealth, and Travel podcast. This is our Digital Nomad Digest segment with myself and with Cami out every single Friday. So in today's episode, we are going to be chatting about our inspiration behind why we wanted to become nomadic. There is so much content out there, of course, as we all know, in the online space. And we're going to talk about what many years back inspired us to look into a nomadic lifestyle to start our nomad journey. Both Cami and I started in very, very different ways. I was an expat in China for my first four years and Cami just left Brazil, went to Portugal, and then went on to many other countries from there. So Cami, why don't you start by sharing a little bit about what was some of the content, some of the media that you consumed online or even in person, if that is relevant, maybe back in the day, five, six years ago, it wasn't so much, but what really inspired you to start looking at the digital nomad lifestyle and taking that seriously and thinking that that was something that you could potentially do in your life as well? Back in 2016, as soon as I graduated from college, this was something already in my mind because during college I had did I did an exchange program. So I for six to eight months I left Brazil and I went to work to study in France and then in the UK, in Paris and in London. And after that, I I just kept thinking to myself, I don't want to live in Brazil. I want to live somewhere else. I need I want to live like abroad or whatever. And I feel like at that time, which was between 2015 and 2016, we started seeing a big rise of influencers, uh, fashion influencers, travel influencers. And I feel like that was the first contact that I have that I had with people that would work and travel at the same time. But at that time, I didn't know how they were making it happen. And as we also talked in the green room before we started recording, at that time, it was really kind of sketchy because you didn't really know what, no one knew what a paid ad was. So no one knew if they were in that hotel because they really liked the hotel and they were talking about the hotel because they loved it or if they were being paid for it. And I, and I remember that no one knew that they were paying for it, being paid for it. No one knew that that was a brand deal or something like that. It wasn't really talked about before. And I remember, I even remember that at some point, I think 2017 or 2018, they had to say that it was a brand collaboration. And now, you know, like they have rules on Instagram about this this and things like that. Before that, it was kind of like the land of no one. I don't know if that's an expression in English. We have this expression in Portuguese. So it was like the land of no one, you know, people were just doing whatever they wanted, making so much money and pretending that it was genuine collaborations. And I feel like that was kind of the first contact that I had with some type of work and travel at the same time. So I thought to myself that I had to become an influencer or something like that and have a YouTube channel so I could be able to do that. And at some point, as I told you as well, I bought this course in 2016. So it was a quite raw and to be honest, not with a lot of information course about how to become a digital nomad. That was the title of the course. It was in Portuguese. It was from a Brazilian couple, which were really well-known bloggers at the time. So they had had a lot of success in the blogging industry and they were living in Thailand and there they had, I think they had a YouTube, but they had their Instagram page together and kind of You know, they were like the digital nomad couple and they were one of the first and most influential digital nomads in Brazil. So they were quite known and they were showcasing this, the lifestyle that they had of living in Thailand, going to the beach, working from the beach and all of the glamorous things that we see digital nomads showcasing. And I thought to myself, oh my God, I want that. I bought the course. It was horrible. It didn't help me in anything, to be honest. 
it was very, very basic in terms of marketing and everything. But yeah, after that, I feel like that was something that was meandering around my mind and just, yeah, it just never stopped. You know, it was this seed that was planted back in 2016. And I was like, I don't know, I don't care how long it will take me. I don't know. I don't care what I'll do. I just need to live in this way. And after, during this time, I came across this podcast that's called The Lively Show by a woman named Jess Lively. And she, for me, has been and continues being one of my biggest inspirations ever. I met her in person, actually, like super randomly in Portugal. Like I ran into her in a square and it was like my fangirl moment because I don't really have a fangirl to towards anyone but when I saw her I was like oh my god I can't believe that I'm seeing you in person you were one of you are one of the reasons why I'm here because she was someone who started connecting to her intuition and eventually she sold her house she sold everything and she went on traveling and she had this concept you know of like traveling with her intuition and with her inner voice and I was like oh my god one day I want to do that I want to learn how to travel with my intuition I want to do it on my own I heard I binged heard her podcast over and over and over because she was constantly telling stories about traveling and yeah she had that lifestyle you know traveling out, out of a suitcase and living out of a suitcase so I feel like she was one of my biggest inspirations and for sure someone who still inspires me so much not on the traveling aspects because now it's kind of different but yeah I feel like she kind of showed me that it was possible to live in this way but also in this more spiritualized with this more spiritualized approach as well and she was a business owner you know she had a podcast she was creating content but her business was so different from the other ones that I was seeing. she wasn't an influencer she wasn't posting brand deals or anything she was just creating purposeful content and I was like yeah that's that's something that I, I really want to do. I love hearing your journey and where you started because it's so completely different for me. But before I get into that, as a side note, it's funny how you mentioned like 2016 or whatever the year was, the Brazilian Digital Nomad course. And it's like we were talking off air. They probably had no idea even what a true digital nomad was. I mean, it's evolved so much, especially since COVID. But it's just so funny to see people teaching people all the way back then on the internet when, you know, 2016, like I wasn't even in China at that point. It was just kind of an idea in my mind. And I definitely was not thinking about working online, let alone taking a course online. I love how you were kind of, you know, pretty ambitious of like, okay, I found this. I want it. I want to do it. Whereas for me, I think what I was looking for was to be a digital nomad, but this was 2017. So again, still pretty new to the nomad space. There were people doing it, but you kind of had to be in that realm or find one of those few specific people on the internet. And I hadn't done that. I was thinking, how can I leave Canada? How can I leave my home country? And what is that going to look like? And so I thought, oh, I can get a job in another country and just start from there. And my plan was to start up for a year. And then after that, probably leave the country and then figure out what else, what else I wanted to do. I ended up moving to China and living the expat life for four years. And that was now that I'm nomadic and I understand this lifestyle much more so, I realized that that was what I wanted, but I didn't know that that was a thing per se back then. So one of the resources and inspirations that I had, and I know we talked off air about podcasts. And so during COVID, when all of this really started for me, I was in a very, very small town in Canada where my parents live in lockdown, living with my parents, like the last place I wanted to be. But every single evening, because in the summer, it was so beautiful, perfect weather in Canada, I would go on a walk. And I would, I had never really listened to podcasts that much, but I would listen to a few specific digital nomad podcasts. And unfortunately, the one was called Digital Nomad, I think Cafe or something, but it's not active anymore. But at the time it was active and he talked to other digital nomads who were doing different things. And that was when I started to realize, well, I already understood that you could have a business online, but I was like, wait, you could have a business and you could travel. And like all of the pieces were clicking. And I'm sure there was a few other podcasts at the time. I don't remember exactly what they would have been, 
uh, all of the pieces kind of started clicking. So for me, I would say my first inspiration was some podcasts. And now there are so many more podcasts and this one right here as well, of course, that will help you get started and really begin your journey and continue your growth journey as a digital nomad as well. But another one for me was, this is so random, but I think we all, especially a few years ago, had an account on Instagram or on social media that we loved. And it was just this one digital nomad girl. And I loved her content. It was so specific to nomad. She kind of posts a little bit less now, so it's less relevant. At the time, I was like, oh my gosh, what she's doing is what I want. And just seeing her content was so inspirational. So then I went back to China and I was like, I have, this is not the end goal. I have a new end goal and it's to make money online, to start a business that I love and to travel the world full time. A lot of people had that realization during COVID. For me, during COVID, I, I felt like I was in such a rock bottom as well. Like I was, I also was, you know, like living my dream, just had come back from Bali from living there for four months. I was living in London for one month. And my plan was to just do some workaways and some volunteers around Europe and just like teaching yoga on random places and I don't know, doing something in random places until I found a way to make money online. Then from one day to the other, I was literally on a plane back to Brazil because, yeah, like there was. <laughs> There was no way that something else would happen. It was COVID. But yeah, for sure, I already had this idea in mind. Didn't know how I was going to make it work. But I also really wanted to, to do that. And when I got to Brazil, my whole, the entire one year and a half that I stayed there was, okay, how can I get back to doing that? How can I get back to traveling and working? How can I make this work? And how can I make this sustainable in a way? And I remember that I came across this book that has nothing to do with digital nomadism, actually, and traveling. But it's one of the books that changed my life. And one of the books that, for me, is like something that I live by, which is called The Surrender Experiment, which is by Michael Singer. And I talk about this book oft, often because this, for me, is living by your intuition and living by your soul. What he does and the way that he talks and he explains his life on the book is really someone who is so connected to life, to the universe, to his intuition, to his inner guidance, to trusting and surrendering. And it's a book about surrender, but it's his autobiography. So he tells the story of his own life and how he learned how to surrender and saying yes to different opportunities that showed up in his life, how his life evolved and went into so many beautiful and magical circumstances and down so many beautiful and magical paths that he could have never created with his mind, only with his soul if he allowed and surrendered. And it's so crazy to see his life, like the way that his life unfolded so just so I can give you a little explanation. So he began, he began his life uh, at some point. He had like this quote unquote spiritual awakening and he thought to himself, OK, I want to live in a hut in the middle of nowhere and I just want to meditate every day, all day. So he went on to this like random place, bought a piece of land, built this wooden hut for himself. And all he would do all day was meditate because that's what he thought he wanted to do with his life. After a certain point. He, every time that he went down to the gas station, I don't know, he saw a computer. It it's not like exactly like that, but he saw a computer and he got really interested in that and like it perked his interest and he followed that, you know, that inner guidance. He bought the computer and he started learning how to code, but not because he wanted to build a business out of it, just because he just was really interested in it. So he started learning how to code and then someone found him through somewhere. He started making loads of money by coding. At some point, a person found his hut and started building things around him. And out of nowhere, he had this like, I don't know, like super big business retreat center. So he started opening so many different businesses but not because he really wanted to do it. It was just because he kept following like his inner voice and he kept being led to opening a retreat center, 
opening like this technology company to the point that he then became like a billionaire, like a millionaire, really. The guy made really a lot of money. And by the end of it, he had to go to like, he had like a court case because of the FBI. Like so many, so many different things unfolded from just him saying yes and keep following his inner guidance. And for me, it's a beautiful story that showcases that you can follow your inner guidance and still become really successful in whatever you are meant to do. Not just follow your inner guidance, go to the Himalayas, become a monk, and then become completely detached from everything. Because the guy was in the 3D reality. He was doing work that was meaningful. He was making money. He was creating and generating impact that was coming from the heart, you know? So he was present in society, but he was present in his own surrendered way. And he wasn't attached to the one business or the next business. He just kept flowing and evolving as flow would take him. So for me, like his life is such an inspiration. And I feel like it's very much a similar way that I live, you know, with the whole surrendering and trusting my intuition and just try not to be attached to certain outcomes and just kind of trusting that my inner guidance will lead me to somewhere great and will lead me to my own version of success and to impact the world with my gifts and things like that. Hey, hey, it's Nicole, your host. I wanted to pop into this episode super quickly to let you know if you have not already left a review on your favorite podcast platform, I would seriously appreciate it if you did. Leaving a review helps with the discoverability of the show. And if you want to support the show, that is the best way that you can do so. Thank you for leaving a review. I really do appreciate it. And let's hop back into the episode. That is something that is often very overlooked when starting this journey or starting any journey it's something that's so overlooked is following what whatever you want to call it like your inner voice or spiritual guide or like whatever it may be is following that and I think for me that's the beautiful thing about this digital nomad lifestyle or really any lifestyle like I always say any lifestyle that you are really aligned with because and a lifestyle that you have chosen for yourself because you are listening to yourself and what you want. And it's very, very easy in today's society, culture, whatever day and age, whatever you want to call it, to just go along with the motions, to just do whatever everybody else is doing. And increasingly, I think that many of us, and that's why I love connecting with other nomads as well, because we all have that piece in common, that we didn't want to just go with the status quo, that we listened to whatever that inner voice or guidance may be. And it was so interesting. I was listening to a few other digital nomad podcasts on our travels. We just got to Chile. So on our travels here and she was saying, and I have never heard another digital nomad just like outright say this. And it was so interesting for me to hear her say this. She said that her, along with a lot of the other nomads that she knows, have never truly felt aligned in their home. She was on the podcast with another nomad and they were both talking about one from America, one from Latvia talking about how where they grew up and their country that they grew up in, they never really felt aligned with. And I didn't realize that I think quite a few other nomads, maybe even a lot of the nomads out there feel this way. And I still can't put it into words. We've talked about it before because I know you feel similarly, but I can't put into words why I never felt like my life should be in Canada. It very easily could have been. I very, very easily could have not chosen this lifestyle. And I could still be there, but it doesn't mean that I would feel aligned if I was still there. I found it really interesting to hear her saying that. And I was just, I was literally in the bus station and I was nodding along, like physically nodding along. And people were probably looking at me like, what the heck is up with this girl? But I was like, I don't care. You know, like I so resonate with what she was saying. I love hearing um, other nomads when they really just talk unfiltered about, you know, not caring about like, am I going to offend anybody? And it's so, Interesting because I think so many of our deepest thoughts are so aligned. I also think that this lack of alignment is you following that gut feeling of I don't feel good here and I feel like my most expensive life, like not expensive money-wise, like expanded version of life is not in this country. And I think that that for me is the most important thing 
for people to take in, which is, you know, if you could really sink into yourself right now and ask yourself, okay, what's the highest and most aligned version of myself and what would, how would this version of myself be living right now? And I feel like for me, whenever I asked this question before, it was always not living in my home country. And right now I feel really aligned to it. Like I feel like my highest version of myself is doing exactly what I'm doing right now. So that makes me really, really fulfilled and really happy and really proud of myself because I took so many scary actions to get here. You know, I'm really grateful for the past version of myself that spent the little money that she had on that course, although she didn't took a lot from it. <laughs> you know, it's just something that since like, you know, it's been eight years that I've been wanting to live in this way. And thank God it's been, I don't know, two years and a half that I have been living this way. And, it, you know, it wasn't something that came easy or that came instantly, but I kept making different decisions and following my inner voice towards that. I remember at there was a point that all of my friends, when we had gotten out of college, when we had graduated college, a lot of my friends, they were all in stable jobs, in corporate jobs, in their careers. And I remember that I spent like seven months unemployed. And a part of that of those months, I was trying to open a, a fashion startup with a friend of mine that really didn't flow. And the other half, I just spent like depressed, really feeling so lost, so confused, knowing that I felt so not aligned with where, where I was, but not really knowing what I wanted to even do. I didn't know. I know I knew that I wanted to work and travel, but I didn't know where, like how, with what, you know. So eventually I got a job and I kept thinking to myself I'm not going to go down the corporate thing I'm not going to go get a job in the office I'm not I want a remote uh, remote job like I know that I can have it and I know that it's possible no one around me had a remote job at that time it was 2016 or 2017 so keep in mind that that was really rare like there was no you know remote jobs and I remember my parents were like, Camille, just get over yourself. You're going to have to work from a, from an office. Like, just get over yourself. Go and apply for jobs. I was like, no, 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 no. And eventually I had a job that did come through. It was in fashion and it was in production agency and blah, blah, blah. And it was remote. And I only had to be physically there when I had like shootings or something like that or a very specific meeting with a client other than that it was completely remote I remember that I was making more money than all of my friends that were in like trainee in corporate and I was working remotely I could work from anywhere that I wanted I yeah I was just like living the life and I was like I told you guys I told you that I could do it no one believed in me now this is working and after that, I kept always manifesting uh, remote jobs. But, and it's because I feel like I didn't back down. I wasn't like, I'm not going to take this thing. I'm not going to settle. That's not what I want. And, and I'm not saying to any, like, I'm not saying that, like, do it exactly like me. Because I feel like, you know, there are moments in your life, like I was living with my parents at that time, you know, it was okay. I didn't need to pay rent. However, if today something happened with my jobs and everything I would maybe get a corporate job I would maybe get like a, ca a job in a cafe or something like that but I would also do it with the intention of this is a bridge because this is not where I'm ending like this is not my end goal I'm not gonna stay stuck in here and I feel like this is a mindset that for me was a game changer in me getting to where I am right now which I don't think it's you know I'm not like fucking Alex Hormozy or something like that but you know, I'm really proud of how far I've come. <laughs> Before we share some more inspiration and what that looks like for us, I think it's so important to recognize <clears throat> that the past version of yourself is what got you here. And for me, that's why it sounds so cliche and so cheesy. And I, I actually hate saying it, but I say it because it's true. When people are like, what tips or like, what would you say to people wanting to like start out on a similar lifestyle? And it's just do it. Like it sounds so simple. And like, I, I hate saying it, but it's the truth. Because if you don't just take the action, if that, if the version of you that you are now doesn't just take the action, you never will. 
And yes, you're going to grow and evolve. And then you'll be at where we are now, which is looking back years ago and thinking to yourself, wow, I'm so glad. Like for me, I'm so glad that Nicole at 21 years old, when like most people, like you said, are getting a corporate job and kind of starting their traditional life that they're going to have for the rest of their life. I was like, fuck this. No, I don't want this. I want something else. And it was really scary for me to move to China alone. I had never been to Asia on my own. I had traveled alone once in my whole life at that point and moved to China, go to Asia, not knowing if I'm going to like it and not knowing anything about the language. And literally just me, I didn't know a single other soul that was going. And I look back on it. I'm like, I'm so happy I had that courage. But it was because the reason I had that courage was because I knew what I didn't want. I didn't know what I wanted, but I knew what I didn't want. And that was where I was. And so I knew I had to take some sort of action. And I also knew, worst case scenario, I could leave China, go back to Canada, regroup, and then go somewhere else. You know, like the world isn't going to end if China didn't work out. And I feel like you have to have that very open mindset. What I always say to you again, like so, so cheesy, but so true, is... You can't see the whole staircase, but you have to just be able to see the first step. And then as your journey goes on, you'll be able to see more and more. But we, you know, you and I would have never guessed that we would end up here. But we had to take that first leap, take the first step in the staircase, if you want to say. And six years later, here I am. And years later, here you are. So yeah, I think that that it's it's so cheesy, but it's so true. You know, sometimes those cheesy things are actually true. Um, but yeah, what are a few other resources that you found, not the course, but that you found that were really helpful in starting your journey? Starting my digital nomad journey per se, I would, I don't, I can't think of any other, to be honest, because because I, I, I feel like I did a lot of, things that were not the recommended way of things to be done you know (laughs) and I feel like because of that I kind of like was following my own gut my own inner voice and not really being except like the Jess Lively from the Lively show and then the Surrender Experiment I feel like there were a lot of other resources that helped me you know work on my mindset and my limiting beliefs and things like that but not really like on the digital nomad journey per se not that i can think of right now at least what about you i feel like honestly the podcasts were a big one for me and there's so many free resources out there as well like if i think if you want the general information there is podcasts there's like free webinars there's youtube but if you really find one creator like i really love this one creator and now thinking back i'm like i probably should have just asked her and said you know like booked a call with her and asked her because and back then there was a little bit more like we said mystery around being a digital nomad but there's so many free resources out there to just kind of get you started and then when you have the specific questions like for me I had questions about finance and taxes and now that's what I share about because I'm knowledgeable because I was curious and I had to learn all of that within the last like three years of this journey of mine you know so I feel like if there is one area are you with alignment like talk to that person but just getting started there's so much free shit out there honestly there's podcasts like I said there's YouTube videos there's like really cheap courses on like Udemy although I don't think I would recommend like a mm, mad yeah. course that would be more specific to business and yeah. like whatever it is that you want to start I've, I've definitely well yeah I mean when we talk about business which is kind of like a whole nother podcast but I have invested and I know you have too, thousands and thousands and thousands. <laughs> and we could talk about this in another episode because a lot of those investments were not worth it, were not what I thought, did not pay off. But it, that also taught me to be pretty skeptical of a lot of programs mm. and courses. And now I'm at a point where I, I was just thinking about this the other day, not the other day, like the last few months. I was thinking about I hate when people try to pitch me courses because I'm not at the beginning of my business journey and I don't have time to do your freaking course that's going to take me you know hours and hours or days and weeks and I know courses are great and passive income and I have a mini course and it's very specific to you know pair of white residents so it's not for everybody that's why I don't really advertise it but the people who are coming in are coming in from one way where they are looking for that information 
and I give it to them in the most succinct, shortest videos possible because I don't want anyone to waste my time. I don't want to waste anyone else's time. So courses these days, I'm pretty skeptical of if I I actually am not invested in anything right now, but in the future, if I am, it will be one-to-one because I just want the knowledge. I don't want to go sifting through all of the courses to have to find it, but that's, that's a little rant, but I have invested in quite a bit for my business. Most of my like software recurring expenses are business expenses. And that's also a pretty big expense is everything that I pay for every month. But yeah, I don't know. That could be a whole nother episode in and of itself. It's interesting because other than the specific inspirations that I shared about, you know, like a lifestyle aspect of it, which I feel like it's very also connected to this more spiritual perspective that I have of life. Other than that, my biggest questions in the past of becoming a a digital nomad, they were always about, okay, how do I make money enough to be able to travel? So personally, I never had a question of like, how do I book a flight? How do I find the best deals in hotels? How do I find an Airbnb? I kind of like just bootstrapped myself along the way you know so I was I don't know I discovered randomly I discovered Facebook groups randomly I discovered whatever like randomly discovered things by myself a lot so my biggest kind of questions and what I would always look out for as resources were always how can I set up a like what type of business can I have how can I get clients how can I get freelance job like everything in regards to business and being an entrepreneur i could just share a lot of different books and courses and things like that but for me it wasn't really about the lifestyle or like the how do i you know work from a beach i don't know like i just kind of like okay whatever like if i'm making money then i can figure out everything else what were some of those resources that helped you figure out like oh i can do this online or resources that are helping you now currently in your business i i don't know if you agree with me but the bga course thing although it wasn't like the best for me it wasn't the worst either so there were some like digital marketing things that were really interesting from that but since i i graduated in marketing for me it has always been a bit easier to kind of navigate around marketing and digital marketing So I would say that nowadays I'm also really skeptical of courses because that was one course that I was like really expecting a lot. And I saw that a lot of basically what I saw is that online courses, they are cookie cutter mode. So if this is their process, it's A plus B plus C equals success. And if you are not going to be feeling aligned to doing A or B or C, you're not going to get success. And like in this course, for example, she talked a lot about cold call, like cold outreach kind of and things that I really don't feel alignment, especially in a soon um, episode that we're going to talk about as a projector in human design. Like that's not really a line because the strategy of a projector is to be invited. So for me to just throw my advice onto people, I feel really icky and I see that that doesn't work for me. Like. I've seen multiple times. I know how I get clients. That's not how I get clients. I've never got one client from doing this because it feels disgusting for me. I don't feel aligned, you know? And then when I take away this part of the process, I just take away the whole thing because that's one of her big pillars in the course was that, you know? So nowadays, so after that, I kind of started realizing that courses are really cookie cutter modes for the way that the person found that it worked for them. That's why I really dislike, you know, saying, telling people what to do. I like to guide them to their intuitions and their own energy so that they can set up their business or whatever they want in a way that makes sense for them. But yeah, so I would say that nowadays what I like to do more is I like to just buy books and from people that I think are big authorities in the entrepreneurial area. and. Yeah. And then, you know, like a Kindle book is like 10 euros, 20 euros, you know, so worst case scenario, hate the book and then you'll stop reading it. But you're not like you paid fucking 3000 euros for a course and you're like, okay, this is really not aligned to me, you know? So, yeah. So as I told you, I bought the 100 million leads from Alex Ramosi, which is 
really nice. I like it. It's very like no bullshit market. But at the same time, he also has a more cool. Well, he kind of develops a lot of different pillars of marketing, but one of his pillars is called outreaching, which for me is a bit too much. So there are some things that I'm putting into practice and I've seen some results, but yeah, I'm like still reading that one. I recently bought one that's called, I don't know if, by the way, if you have not read this book, I think you would really like love it. It's called Designing Your Life, How to Build a Well-Lived, Joyful Life. It has so, it's so much to do with lifestyle design, the thing that you always talk about. It's basically these guys, they have a course in Stanford about kind of like life design. And it became so popular that it became like a waitlisted course. You know, people were fighting to get into it. It's like one of the top courses in Stanford. And then because no one could get like few people could get in, they created this book about it. And it's really cool. It has some like actionable steps and everything. So that is a book that I'm reading right now. And I feel like is really good for the business aspect of it. But also, yeah, me, I personally want to also get some inspirational tools that I can share with my clients, my one-on-one coaching clients. And I think it's just really cool book. But for now, business books, I feel like those are kind of it. What about you? So to touch on that, to do like a little, little rant of courses bga so boss graham academy if anybody doesn't know what that is and it's so interesting to me the amount of people i personally know who have taken her course i'm like i had no idea you even knew who vanessa Lau was let alone you've also taken her course i took it oh, back in like 2020 or something like it was a while ago she's gone off of all of social media since then i mean i took that course and i was pretty new in marketing and i was able to figure out a lot of things I found out later after I watched her course from YouTube because every single one of her modules, I was like, this, it's maybe it's a little bit of new information, but for the most part, it was just common knowledge to me because I had already been looking into a lot of digital marketing and how to get clients online. I was pretty disappointed and that was the first pretty big investment I made into a course. And then I took another course which is a really great organization, but, and I find a lot of courses do this. So I think be wary if you are taking a course, especially on like working online or how to grow a business online. They talk so much about Instagram and optimizing your profile and getting clients from Instagram. And for me, I did have a business Instagram. I still do have a business Instagram account, but I have not posted on it in over a year because that's just not how I ever got clients. And because it works for them, usually that's how you get into their funnel and then you purchase their course. They're like, oh, do this and this. But you really have to have a passion for Instagram and you have to have a passion for that type of posting and for that type of engagement. And I do for my personal brand, but for my business, I just didn't. So I was pretty disappointed because there was like, 10 weeks or 12 weeks in the course and like three or four were all about optimizing your profile and Instagram and outreach. And, and then so many people try to sell you on Instagram too. It's like, oh, wait, you're trying to sell me. I was trying to sell you. <laughs> I was just listening to a podcast where they were talking about that happening. And it really comes down to also figuring out what channels work for you. But right now I do, I do usually listen to Audible books. I have some on my Kindle as well, but lately I've just been listening to Audible books. And then also lately I've been really liking podcasting for the specific topic, whatever it may be. So I do do quite a bit of cold outreach and there are so many good podcasts and also YouTube videos about cold outreach in various different forms of cold outreach. And then of course, you know, especially all the YouTube videos, they're pushing their course and they're like, oh, go join this. And for me, it used to be such a temptation when I liked a creator or I liked their content to want to purchase what they had and now I'm just like I don't have the time the YouTube I feel like these days you really have to give so much value away to bring people in which is amazing and I think that's such a great tactic because it really shows that you're the expert but it's enough value for me to be able to figure the rest out you know it's not nothing nothing in the online space quite honestly is rocket science like it can all be figured out if you have specific questions then you know book a coaching call with them or a one-to-one call if they have that option. But for me, where I am right now to actually put my time into a course or some sort of container that somebody's pushing is likely not going to happen. Yeah, for me, it's been podcasts and YouTube has been the way that I've been learning new skills and leveling up in my business, which 
I like, I mean, it really works for me. It might not work for everybody, but for me, I've found that it really works. Courses and lessons on YouTube and everything, they will take you to a certain point. They will only take you so far. After that, you just have to take the actions. And I feel like when we start a course, we kind of maybe forget that or we think that it's going to be so ingrained in us that it's going to be easy or something like that. But you have to like create the post, you have to maybe do the code outreach or create the funnel, create yeah, the like email. Yeah, like you have to actually do the yeah, work. exactly. And I think that's so important. I think that's something that a lot of people forget is like, yeah, you're taking the course, but you still have to do the work. And that's why even now there's some coaches that I've like looked at in the past and I'm like, I've had a coach in the past and she was amazing. I've really only had one proper coach, I would say. But I would get off the call and it would be hours and hours of work. And so now that I've kind of had, you know, those two main forms of like coaching and courses, I feel like are the main forms. I'm like, I have enough faith in myself and I'm such a doer. I'm like, I can, I can figure out. I, if I have a question, I will. And I did have a question about SEO a while back. So I went on Fiverr. And I hired an expert for like 200 bucks and he gave me a consult call and my questions were answered and I was happy and he was happy. And I found that that works for me, but it works different for everyone. I feel like this is really important for us to maybe end on this note is that if you're listening to this podcast and you're kind of figuring out what you want to do, how you want to make money or something like that, how to, you know, work out the online space or something like that, know that you don't have to buy the course or even buy the book or anything. The book I would recommend because, you know, it's always nice. But you don't have to buy the well, how many euro scores just so you can then become the digital nomad or you can then become the no, no, no. It's really about, I feel like, learning and taking aligned action from what you're learning. Like, learn a little bit, take some aligned action on it, learn a little bit more, take some aligned action on it. And I say aligned action because it's not about taking any action blindly that the creator or the expert is telling you to take is for you to filter within yourself, within your body and your energy. Like, does this make sense for me to do or does this not, does this, or it doesn't? And if it doesn't, don't do it. And then you're learning something else about yourself, the things that you don't feel like doing and then learn from someone, from, from someone else or, you know, look for a different source. But yeah, I think that it's really important for people to hear that they can do this by not spending loads of money on courses. Like you can figure it out. And ultimately, the most important thing will be for you to take the aligned actions for you to get to where you want to go. Uh, and even if you do buy a course, which is kind of an action, you still have to buy the like do the act, take the actions within the course. So yeah, choose your actions let's say inner inner in inner wisely. voice wisely <laughs> yeah totally agree completely agree yeah, like i said it's so important to know you whatever you purchase there is still action it's not like the purchase is going to allow you to not take action just because you've spent money on it i feel like for me that's why i like booking the calls with the experts because it's the least amount of action afterwards that i have to take because now i have all of the answers and yes i still have to go and seo optimize everything but i actually He's, he's seen my screen, you know, and he's seen it. And so I know what to do and we've talked about it and the talking points are there. So that's how I like to work. But, you know, everybody works differently. But I feel like it's also such an evolution as you evolve as a nomad, as a person, as a business owner, you realize what works for you and what doesn't. So, yeah, this has been a really interesting discussion. I feel like we always, always end up talking about our topic plus other things, which is I hope very helpful. The messages that I receive are really amazing. And it sounds like everybody listening really enjoys the content we talked about. But if you have any specific topics or action items or anything that you think would be of interest for us to chat about, then please message me on Instagram at nomadneeks is my handle. And I would be happy to hear what you are curious about in the digital nomad space the travel space, whether it be aligned travel or even minimalism, starting a business, all of the things that go along with being an entrepreneur and being nomadic, we would love to hear from you. So thank you for joining us today in this week's segment of Digital Nomad Digest with myself and with Tammy. If you are listening, please leave a review for the show if you are on Apple or Spotify. That is really, really greatly appreciated. And we will see you in next Friday's episode.
You've just listened to the Work, Wealth, and Travel podcast. If anything from this episode stuck out to you, I would appreciate if you share this podcast on your socials and, of course, be sure to tag me at Nomad Neeks. Don't forget to leave a review on your favorite podcast platform. And as always, thank you for joining me on this learning journey, and I will see you next week.